Blessings and glory, wisdom, thanksgiving, and honor, and honor, power, power belongs to our God forever and ever. Ah, e, power and my power and my ah, belongs to a God forever and ever. Ah, e, power and my. Power and man belongs to a God forever and ever. Ah, he. Power and might, power and man belongs to a God forever and ever ah, he. power and might power and might belongs to a God forever and ever he power and might power and might belongs to a god oh, forever and ever he Indeed, power and might belongs to you, O our God, forever and ever we sing, Amen. Glorify yourself through the entrance of your word. In Jesus' name we have prayed, Amen. Okay. So, today I will try as much as possible for it to be interactive. And... It's my heartbeat and my desire is that we will take on board the lessons. How do you know you've learned something? It has to affect every choice you make. It has to revolutionize you. When lessons are learned, fear gives way to love. And love breeds passion being purpose. You know, uh, it's amazing how God works. And I know without a shadow of doubt that this year is not coming to an end until someone receives whatever the Lord meant for him or her. Amen. God is the only God who is able to do that. As a matter of fact, the only limitation is God in God is the doubt of man. Your God is as powerful as your faith you have in him. Think about it. Did you hear me? I said the only limitation in God we have is to the extent of your doubt of him. Are you, are you with me? So we embark on this journey and it's taking us to a realm of understanding that it's possible for you to be stolen without being displaced. Yes. 
for me to steal from you, I need to get from you something of value. I'll get it from you. But because I am a man, the things I steal from you, I have to make sure that it is translated to an extent that it benefits me as a man. But God is not a man. And Satan is not a man. We forget that. That God is not a man. Satan is also not a man. So if Satan is going to steal from you, he is not going to steal from you based on the things that are valuable to you. Because our value systems are different. Think about it this way. In order to start this, let me give you this scenario. Imagine you are alive. And some ways, somehow, you don't know who you are. You don't know your parents. You don't know growing up what you used to like or what you didn't like. Let's say along the way, something happened and you, you've lost your memory. You have no relation. Not that you don't have, but you've forgotten. In a way, you've lost self. In that scenario, could it be that whoever placed you in that space have stolen from you? If I can manage to steal your identity from you, to the extent that you've forgotten who you are, relationships and everything. But you are still there. Those, when, those who know you, when they see you, is the same person. Just that you may act weird or different. You may order from a different menu that in the world you were used to, you didn't even know existed. And all of a sudden, and new things are coming, but when they see you, they see you as somebody they know you, but you don't know them. And most of the time, that is what the enemy does. When the enemy sees you. In John chapter, look at John. Do we have the microphones here? Okay. Look at John chapter 10. John chapter 10, verse 10. The thief does, does not come except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So the enemy's number one agenda is to steal from you, to destroy, and to kill. You know, normally when we look at this scripture, we think about, you know, a job that we lost or we were fired or some monies that were due as that nobody paid. So we think in terms of physical things. But most of the stealing happens in a dimension that you take for granted. And so today, what we want to do is to still see how the enemy can steal and then use everything you had before you were stolen to his advantage. Mm. 
One preacher said, when purpose is not known, abuse becomes inevitable. And there is always a cooperation from the abused. The abuse have to cooperate with the abuser for abuse to be possible. No one can abuse you without your cooperation. Are you aware of that? Yes. Nobody can get you in a worry mode without your cooperation. The enemy can never get you to think you are nothing if you don't permit him. Because for the, for the enemy to get your attention, it is you who has voted that he deserve your time. Because somebody else also wants your attention, and that is God. And whoever is winning the battle in your life is the one who gains your attention. Because if God had given the enemy unrestrained power, some of you would have fallen down and died. Do you think if the enemy had the power to invade your world, he will come to you through dreams? He would have physically come and struggle you to death because that is how wicked the enemy is. And so if he cannot physically come and manifest and struggle you to death, what he will do is that he will build or connect you to relationship and people who are vulnerable and who are weak in mind and so they achieve his purpose for him but they are in the same space as you. This is why the enemy needs human cooperation to work on earth. And all God has also chosen to use human cooperation to work on earth. So when God invades in your life and he begins to use you, it is not stealing because you belong to him. But when the enemy invades your life and he begins to use you, he's stolen because you were not made by him. The owner cannot steal from himself because he owes it. At first, any time I go on life, I didn't have to put any, what is it called? Uh, for copyright reasons, I didn't have to put not what I'm at. Uh, they only go on life and play power worship songs. So I don't have to put disclaimer because we owe it. But since I started playing other people's songs, I have to put disclaimer because I cannot steal from myself. And so when God is using you, he's not stolen. But when the enemy decides to use you, he's stolen. Why? Because he was not created to influence anyone. He was created to save. The greatest thing in the life or the most valuable thing in the life of the creator is purpose. I'm getting somewhere. Say purpose. Every creator think in terms of purpose. Everything on earth serves a purpose. Purpose answer what question? Purpose answer the question of why? You can ask question at any time. And so when the enemy comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy, what he tempers with is the why.
Yes. Okay, so even it's, it's a less step, if you permit me, I want to step one step, uh, you know, take a step back. Now, even you yourself cannot determine the why because you did not make you. So the why, the one with the patent of the why is the creator. So when it comes to the why, is the creator who determines the why. This is why the creator writes the manual. manual. David said, I have come in the volume of the book written of me to do thy will. And so David himself cannot choose his purpose. So this is why you don't create purpose. You discover purpose. And so when you do not discover purpose and you don't know your purpose, or if even you know, the enemy now can use people who permit themselves to undermine the purpose. So what the enemy will do, the same gifts The giftings and the callings are without repentance, of God, are without repentance. So the same gift, the same calling, God doesn't take back. He's not a man to lie, neither the son of man to repent. So when he creates you and he gifts you and he calls you, he doesn't change his mind. The only thing he regulates is anointing. Because God gives you gifts, he calls you, and he gives you the empowerment to do the work. So if you are using your gifts for his glory, he anoints you, he empowers you to do it. But if you choose not to use it to do his purpose, he does not empower. And so the enemy jack your purpose, change the purpose, Make it more friendly and something that suits you. And notice that the things we like is based on how we've been influenced. I told you about my meat experience, right? It was actually rock pool. I put it out there. That I was used to my and then somebody had the sense to tell me no why because what you are eating is a reflection on me so let's come to a deal medium to well and when I tried it I've never gone back to well done I would rather go to you know medium than back to well done so notice how Something has shifted because an information. And so the enemy places us in places where he begins to expose us to a fruit called the knowledge of good and evil. But the fruit God has permitted for us is the fruit of life. And life feeds purpose. Because the enemy have always been an abuser. So when the Bible said that the enemy does not come except to steal, to kill, to destroy. But Jesus comes to give life and life more abundantly. Why? Because the life of God is the word of God. And the word of God reveals the purpose of God. So the purpose of the word of God is to bring light. 
And light does not introduce, it reveals. So when the light of God confronts you, you begin to see things clearly. What God meant from the beginning. And now you begin to understand why certain DNA must be the only DNA that brings you. You begin to even understand why certain people have to make mistakes for you to come on this earth. So there are no mistakes or, you, or not that there are no mistakes. Somebody's mistake is your grace. Because without that, you will not have been here. This is why we come to a Bible verse that said all things work together for us. Good. And so when you, your darkness is enlightened, pain is bearable. We are, we are talking about embracing holistic life. And now we are on that place of consciousness of divine flow. And the idea that some of the flow that God brings our way comes from the horizontal because the horizontal level is all where our problems are. I've, I've, I've been with, you know, I've seen by virtue of what I do, I have spoken to a lot of believers. And I can tell you, most Christians don't have problem with Christ. Most believers, their issue is not God. But their issues are men of God and people of God. Think about it. So it's still the horizontal. Is that true? It's still the horizontal. But most of the flow are also de designed to flow through the horizontal. And that is the idea of sharing. So it is at the level of the place of sharing that people, I don't want to use the word, I can write it, but I will not say it. I will use a softer word, mess others. People will take advantage. People will exploit. People will take your generosity to be a fool. People know what they will not do to somebody, they will do to you because they know you will forgive them. Have you realized? And because of that, they are all designed to steal. So what we need to do is to understand. We need to be embraced and have enough sense in God and eat from the tree of life that we are able to understand that somebody's choices must not change your why. I put it this way. Believe you me. God wants us to share. Share it. Now, this word sharing, when I say sharing, what comes to mind? Okay, let's do this way. Sharing. Eh? Okay, equal. Uh huh. Exchange of value. Uh huh. Abundance. Generosity. Hey, I have a very smart class. Uh huh. Giving and receiving. Benevolence, joy. joy. So notice, sharing, there are so many things. But normally when we talk about sharing, people think in terms of uh, just arms or charity. 
but it's so much more than that. Sharing for me is another way that talk about complementation or community, togetherness. You see, it is only God. We are not supposed to boast, but God designed us for words of affirmation. One of the saddest things in life is when you are in a place that the only person who can talk good about you is you. We are not God to create the world and there is nobody to tell you you've done good. So he looks around, nobody's there and says, boy, you are doing good. When we get that, we are boasting. So God has designed us in such a way that even the poor man on the street, when you give to them, they have something to give to you. Because at times, you, the food you give to somebody is lesser in value than the thank you they will give you. Because you need a kind of mindset that will make you give and still not feel superior. Because a lot of people do good to free their guilty conscience. And to God, it's not goodness. And so when we come to a place of saying that our needs men are not the same, they are not the same. We are at different stages in our lives. But God designed it that way for a reason. And the greatest of the reason is so we can experience what within the Trinity they do experience. You see, in heaven, there is not much sharing that goes on in heaven, apart from the Trinity. Do you realize in heaven, they don't deal among themselves? Think, you read Genesis, where Gabriel is there, and he says, hey, Michael, do you have salt? <laughs> Why? Because in heaven, there is no lack. In heaven, every attention is turned on the throne. But on earth, no, 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 no. Every attention is turned to the throne to the extent of our discovery of purpose. What do I mean? Jesus said, many will come to me in the last days at the place of judgment. That I did this in your name. I did that in your name. He said, you did not do. I never knew you. You did it your way. That's what it meant. Because he said, I am the way. The truth. In God, there are no opinions. God doesn't entertain opinions. This is why in God, his will must be established. Oh, you, you can say all your opinions, but we will get back to, as I was saying... That was the prayer of Jesus. You know, the cup is too difficult. In other words, you know what we agreed, I'm on earth. So I've come to realize that it's difficult. Until he got to a point, not my way, your will be done. And immediately, because Jesus got back to purpose, there was an anointing. How? Because an angel came and empowered The oil flows to the extent of submission. Now, and so when we get to that level of sharing, because until you understand sharing in God, the enemy will hide that. The enemy will steal you and you don't know you've been stolen. You think... When God blesses you, you spend more time in your exalted place. No. Let me prove to you. 
His name should ring a bell. Saul and David. Who was Saul? Who was Saul? A fair skin of Israel. Who was David? The one who succeeded Saul. How many years did Saul become a king? Read your Bible. 40 years. How many years did David become a king? Read your Bible. 40 years. So you cannot say by virtue of the blessings of God, David enjoyed the throne longer years than Saul. They were all given 40 years. Are you, are you with me? They so wanted to become a king. No. It was the favor of God that chose Saul. Did David want to become a king? No. It was the favor of God that chose David. Now, among the two of them, where did they go wrong? Notice the initial time of Saul. Saul was so selfless. Yes. The kind of a man who was so in tune with the father's business that when a donkey was missing, he was sent with a servant to look for the donkey. You can even say he was irresponsible to be sent with a... The, but whatever you want, Saul was chosen on merit, if anything to go by. Because he was the tallest from the shoulder. The word shoulder means uh, responsibility, shaken. The favor of God chose him. All right. God spoke to Samuel. When Saul finally located the prophet, when the servant convinced Saul and located the prophet, the prophet said, ah, sleep. A place is prepared, a meal is prepared, you will eat with me. And he was anointed. He met the company of prophets among the three signs he was given. And so also prophesied among the prophets. It was so funny that after that, God through Samuel told him that you've been elected the captain of my people to offer leadership. And yet, he didn't immediately become the king. The children of Israel find themselves before in Mizpah. Saul also went to the farm. Even as David was anointed and had to go back to the work he was doing, Saul actually went to the farm. And he was plowing like Elisha. You see how we don't read all this about Saul? Plowing like Elisha until when he came home. Some evil king, Nahash, have come to the children, the citizens of uh, uh, Nabeth Gilead. Is that the way? And they demanded that they would take the right eye of everyone. And they needed help. Nobody could help them. And when Saul entered the town, he saw everybody was crying. Everybody was sad. And he was told that this is what somebody have said. What did Saul do? The Bible said the spirit of the Lord came upon Saul. And he slaughtered his own animals. Selflessness. And now told the children of Israel by sending pieces to everybody to come along so they fight and liberate people of God. He did it. There was, you know, all kinds of peace. There were all kinds of happiness. And now the Bible said the whole children of Israel gathered an election was they casted for elections and they chose Saul. Read your Bible. I'm talking about 1 Samuel chapter 9 and 1 Samuel chapter 10. And now some people said that they would never allow you know, Saul to be a king. Why? Because he was from the wrong tribe, the youngest tribe, the tribe of Benjamin. And people said after Saul you know, crediting himself with that selfless act. 
they said that who are those, you know, the sons of Belia or worthless people who say Saul will not be a king? Let us bring them and kill them. And Saul said, no, they are the people of God. Nobody should lose their life on this day. This is the typical soul. Until the women started singing. Until Saul allowing the enemy to use people to influence him by disobeying God and choosing what is popular. So though Saul was given the kingship, when the enemy stole Saul, Saul didn't lose his place on the throne. Saul was still on the throne, but his purpose has been stolen and switched. And so his affection, read Paul, Saul was so popular that instead of thinking of building a temple for God like David, do you know what he did? He went to Mizpah and built a monument unto himself. He built a monument unto himself. God watched. God gave him an instruction through the prophet that go to this city and destroy every animal, destroy everyone, everyone, including the king. Saul went and spared all the nice and juicy animals and spared the king. When the prophet came and asked him, did you do what God said do? Oh, yes, I did it. And then the prophet said, why am I hearing the bleating of the animals? Oh, 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 excuses. It's not me. It's the people. They brought it for sacrifice. To obey is better than to sacrifice, says the prophet. And as the prophet was about to leave, he grabbed because, and once also, they were about to go to war, and the prophet seemed to have delayed. What did Saul do? He did it himself. He offered something he was not supposed to. Why? Because the people are crying. When the prophet came, and he said, what have you done? God would have established your kingship. But today, he's taking it from you and giving it to a better man. That would have been about the fifth year of Saul's being on the throne. About five to six years of being on the throne. So when God rejected him, he still sat on the throne more than 30 years. So at the point that the enemy started using him to accomplish his purpose, he's still sharing. But the sharing is motivated not by the purpose of God, but by the self-interest. He's still the king. As a king of Israel, you are sitting in the place of God. So your number one priority is to God and to the people. But for Saul, one of the dangerous things he said to the prophet, when he grabbed the prophet as the prophet was going and the, his, the mantle torn. What have you done? He said, but please honor me before the people. Forget about what God is saying. But honor me before the people. In other words, the position is more important to me than the reason and the one who put me there. So when business become a means of making wealth, personal wealth, and you are willing to do anything to succeed, you have breached the protocols of heaven. I'm not saying you don't trade to make wealth. But your motivation to being in a field must never be the money. 
by service. And then God blesses you and increases you. Because the moment whatever drives you is what the enemy will use to exploit you. Think about it. Hmm, hmm, hmm. These are deep things. You want to do things God's way in terms of sharing? It's very important. Everything Saul went through, David did. The difference between Saul and David is that David was too sensitive for his purpose to be hijacked. In other words, you see, even where David got the enemy, the enemy was against the children of Israel and moved David to count the people. Okay? And then God said, why do you count the people so you believe in numbers more than my might? And God started killing the people. David went and stood between the people and God. And said, I will rather die. Punish me. Spare them and punish me. In other words, whatever I did, it is my mistake. Deal with me, not the people. Which means the assignment of David is more important than, to him than his gain. Is that of values. You see, we see it all the time, but we don't take note of it. You may see it in a teacher who is not making much, but for lack of resources, they will dip into their own pay and get books, resources, crayon for people. Why? Because they believe in the children. That at times, it doesn't matter whether they are paying me well or not. I get my fulfillment not from the money, but from imparting knowledge in the children. And so we see it all the time. You see, one of the shocks of heaven is that our value system is not like God. And so we will see some people in heaven being honored more than people on earth that you assume by virtue of giving some big offerings and certain things they are on it. I'm not saying it's not important because we've been designed differently to influence and to shape societies and communities to open certain grace and certain people to come to a place that God has destined them to be. Are we on the same page? Say with me in the name of Jesus. I declare the enemy will never explore my ignorance and my purpose. Because when the enemy managed to steal your purpose, he reduces you. Think about it. You think the enemy values the things we value? That is a car to an angel. He doesn't need a car. A car is a vehicle, a career to take you from one place to another place. Angels don't need it. So the enemy, the only thing they feed on are purpose. Our value system are different. Different. Purpose is to man what obedience is to God. I said something right there. I said purpose is to man what obedience is to God. And so when the enemy steals, what he does is that you don't know you are stolen but he has hijacked you.
He has hijacked the purpose of God and using it for his own advantage, for his own good. And what is the good that the enemy wants is to sabotage the purposes of heaven and the will of God for families, for communities, for programs, for the world. Can we move on? Yes. <laughs> you you said something. Can you repeat? Looking at so. Uh huh. I'm like, when we look at Saul, he was rejected for almost 30 and some odd years, but he kept on, God kept him on the throne. Yes. And he did good things while he was still on the throne. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying on our own side now, can we be rejected, but keep on doing good things, but at the end of the day, we're not going to meet our... Yeah, okay. So you are, you, are, you are asking the question as a man. Yes. You see, goodness, as I TV is everything when it comes to God. Because remember some, uh, a guy went to Jesus and said, good teacher, what must I do to be saved? The first thing Jesus said, why do you call me good? Nobody is good except God. Isaiah put it this way, our righteousness is even as filthy rags. So the humanity is incapable of goodness outside God. Because if I try to give you money, to influence you, to do something, that is not in alignment of God. You may define it, this man is generous, but God is looking, look at this coward. Because the motives is wrong. Now, notice that when Saul was on the throne, what is actually the assignment of a king is to protect, to govern, to rule on behalf of God, not to chase a private individual. And so notice that even Saul was on the throne, but almost everywhere they galvanized all the national resources to destroy one man. So notice that it's like, you know, going to, you know, a, a country that a dictator is there and writing one article against them. The whole national security apparatus will come after you. You understand? And so notice he's on the throne. He's sitting as a king, but he's hijacked because Saul thought that by killing David, I will enthrone automatically Solomon, uh, you, Jonathan becomes king. But he did not know the reason why the women's songs got him so much is that he has not developed himself to understand that the singing of others does not determine your place in history. Because you cannot write your own story when you are alive. Because it is only when the day a frog dies that we know the length. You understand? So Saul had, did not have to worry because even the song was wrong. Because the truth of the song is that at that time, David had not done anything except to kill a man. Saul had actually gone to war. David only used a sling. But the woman's song moved him to jealousy. And so this is why we need to watch out the issues of pride, the issue of jealousy, the issue of comparing ourselves with one another because the enemy will always plot and use those weaknesses and explore it. And let us to leave bigger things, to chase things that are not important. 
Because if you don't know your, your, your relationship with God, you will sacrifice God. Because the enemy has given you a false promise. And by so, steal your affection. Notice, David went through almost everything Saul went through. But the issue of David is, even where he did mistakes, he remember where he has fallen from and ran to God and is willing to sacrifice everything to maintain his relationship with God. But Saul don't want to do that. For Saul, it's about the position. It's about power. It's about money. It's about wealth. Because as long as I have money, I have influence, and I have good image. But to David, I would rather have a bad name on the streets and have a good name with God than a good name on the streets and a bad name with God. That's the difference between Saul and David. It boils down to purpose. And so there is something called destiny hijackers. It hijacks your destiny. And then use your gifts against you, your community, your sphere of influence, and, and undermine nations. Seldomly does God loses you or take his power or, or, or disown you or if even is seldomly does it happen. As a matter of fact, the greatest grace of God is when his despair coincides with your positioning. What do I mean by that? The difference between, you know Nebuchadnezzar. Do you know why Nebuchadnezzar repented? Because God reduced to animal. In other words, when God became disfavored with Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar, if Nebuchadnezzar had remained on the throne as a king, there would never have been repentance. There would have been excuses. One excuse. And so at times, Hitting the rock bottom is the greatest grace God will ever give you. The greatest grace. Because normally, we look at our, our place in God with all the things we call blessings. It's like... Uh, Let's say for the purpose of this sharing, let, let us use business. That a business, even in spite of the COVID, they are making money and you know, billions of dollars. As long as they are making money, the investors will keep investing. They are, what is it called? The stock exchange. Their, their shares will keep rising. Why? Because they are doing well. Why? Because the bottom line is profit. Their books are strong. But then, this is not how God values business and sources. God values business on impact on others. Okay? So it is not just the amount of money, but how has it affected the lives of others? So there are certain things in the Bible you never see so surrounded by nobodies. The Bible doesn't state it. Saul became a king, and there were generals. But David, before he became a king, he was surrounded by losers, nobodies. Read your Bible. When David ran away from Saul and went to the cave of Adullam, he was gathered around David. Wait, let's read it. 
First Samuel, somebody will think, Papa, where are you taking us? First Samuel chapter 22. Verse number one down was. First Samuel chapter 22. David therefore departed from there and escaped to the cave of Adjulam. So when his brothers and all his house heard it, went down there to him. And everyone who was in distress, everyone who was in debt, and everyone who was discontented gathered to him. So he became captain over them. And there were about 400 men with him. So notice, who got around him? Almost losers. At the end of David's ministry, they were the mighty men. So the success of David was not based on the things he did only for God, but the impact he had on people. Nobody's people without nothing. Because he was always in tune with God. These same people who were not scholars, they were not, they became the mighty men. Now, there is something about David. This is why David always walked with prophets. That everything David do, he inquired from the Lord. And this is why the Bible talks about you know, Psalm 82. Look at Psalm 82. Psalm 82, verse 1. God stands in the congregation of the mighty. He judges among the gods. How long will you judge unjustly and show partiality to the wicked? Defend the poor and the fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. So notice the values of God. He is standing among the mighty and he said, defend the fatherless. The way we play ball, God doesn't do it that way. <laughs> defend the fatherless. And then go to the last one. Ye are God. Is it from verse 6? I'm not sure. Verse 6. Yes. I said, you are God's. And all of you are children of the most. Ah, some of you, some of, of you, you, I'm excited. Be excited like we pretend you're excited. Come on. Elin, smile. All of you are what? Children of the most. Before that, high. he said, ye are gods. Which means there is no limitation when it comes to you. Did you hear me? There is no limitation when it comes to you. Whatever you keep feeding is what will have preeminence. Ye are gods. And you are children of God. How did you become a child of God, not creation of God? It's not by creation. Because by creation, you were created by God. You are no different than the planets. But by redemption, you were a child of God. Why? Because the, child, the God of man became the man of man. So that the man created in the image of God can be. So Jesus came to his own. His own will not receive him. But as many as receive him, he gave them the power. What is the power? The power of God is the word of God. And the word of God is the life of God. And the life of God is the light of God. And so God, when he comes to live in you and you begin to feed on his word and every time you want his perspective, when you are confused, you inquire from him that God, there is a road here. There is this business bill. Where do I pass? When I, when I use my human logic, this is the most profitable. But because I am not God, I need to be inspired by God. So show me the way. And when God shows you, oh my God, you make a, a move that everybody will say you will sank, you are stupid. 
who told you this will ever work? And before they realize, they will have to re reconsider. Why? Because you are not playing according to the rules of the game. You are playing by the finger of the Lord. You are praying, you are playing not by might, not by power, but by the, oh my God. And so listen to me, God delivered a, a people, about 600,000 war fighting men but the all of them were about two million and he did not take them to with to you know by the shorter route but he took them by the longer route and he god intentionally trapped them and when pharaoh knew that they were trapped pharaoh thought pharaoh forgot how they were delivered at times the greatest grace god gives you is the forgetfulness of your enemies. Because the way God would deliver and empower you made a mistake. So they came after the children of Israel again, thinking they were trapped. And the children of Israel started crying. And Moses looked to God. And God said, don't look to me. Move. Where? To the Red Sea. Stretch the rod. Which rod? The same thing you offered me. The same road you offered me when you were by a shepherd. Which means God didn't change the purpose of Moses. He empowered the road. Oh my God. Oh my God. And so the same business you are doing, all what you need to do is to give it to God. Don't run your business like everybody else. Run it by God's incorporated. Listen to me and listen to me well. It's not by my might. It's not by power, but it is by the spirit of god and so when the spirit of god leads you you do not just increase you multiply in dimensions that the human human mind cannot comprehend but every now and then we are reduced as ordinary men ye are those children of god but if you don't know continue to read i said you are gods and all of you are children of the Most High. And you shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. You shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. So not knowing your place in God reduces you to the state of man. What does it mean? This is what makes David dangerous. Think about it. David and his people went on a raid. When they went on a raid, by the time they came back, people also came to raid. And Christians, we always look at the one side. David went on a raid, and some people came to also raid him. And the people, the same people he went on raid with, they thought of stoning him to death. Why? Because everybody was consumed with their lust. And nobody was there to encourage David. And David said, all oh, what I need is the effort. Oh my God. In other words, I cannot, I went as a general, but now I have to stand as a priest and a prophet. In other words, know how to change the rules. Don't just be hyper spiritual. When you are among the unbelievers and they are talking business, talk business, you also know accounting. But when you have talked business and nobody is there, change the rules. God, what formula do I apply? David asks and Abiata, bring the effort. And now David inquire from the Lord. Number one, do I pursue them? In other words, David know how I will not allow my emotions to make decisions. Because my emotions can be manipulated by Satan. This is why the devil will surround you with all kinds of people who give you attitude. They don't believe in you. Why? Because they see by sight. They look at you. It's time for them to make a decision. They look at you. You don't have a nice polo. You are not dressing like the rest. You are not doing all kinds of things and they say, ah, this one will not help my future. They choose cash instead of purpose. But eyes are big, they see not. 
Ears are they, they hear not. Neither have it entered into their heart. Why? Because the time we live in, time is very mobile. Time is quick. When time passed, investment can be. You see America, how they are squandering. It's amazing what God can do. I'm praying. I'm praying for the prophets who have prophesied. For the sake of them, I pray that Trump win. I pray. That is my prayer, seriously. That's my prayer. Help destroy your ministry like that. I'm telling you. Speaking for God, you must never take interest in what man sees. Because people can force you to hear God whilst God has not spoken. I'm telling you, if you are a prophet, people can make you a false prophet. God has talked, God is not talking. And they still want you. Ah, Papa is not moving these days. So, so you also have to move. So before you realize, Scott, 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 who, who came to church? Shall he feed me with this? And then, so all what I have to do is be bribing Scott. I give you, I know he loves Mercedes. So I keep changing the Mercedes. And so it, it, ministry is you scratch my back, I scratch yours. But that is demonic system. I would rather lose my church than be an armed robber. You know the punishment that comes with it? No, 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 no. It's too dangerous to play such games. I can get away from, with you. But with God, hey, the one who doesn't forget. The, you, you don't know God. Eh? Listen, listen, listen. When you say Holy Ghost says, Imagine, I see that you have money and I want it for myself. And you believe me, you trust me. You have said that shape, the Spirit of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord is moving. The Spirit of the Lord. I pour water on me and do all gimmicks just for your money. Yes, you will get it. But you go and meet God. When you lose sight, the enemy will hijack you. Oh, they will not notice. To make you very rich with man, but poor with your relationship with God. Yes. Papa, can I add something? Yes. Um, just referring to David, when uh, he found they were ready to give up, and he said, I had to bring my effort. Mm -hmm. What is the symbolic of the effort to David, and how does it apply in our today's life? What can we use as a symbol to say, I am really rising? Okay. So the effort, it has the, you know, these tools. And it's a representation not only of the justice system of God, but also the fairness of God. And it is a sign what legitimizes the priest to come before God. To us believers, our effort is what Paul wrote about. We wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities. Therefore, put on your whole armor. The armor, your helmet of salvation, which means never do anything that compromises your salvation. I always understand that you did not save yourself. God is the one who saved you. The, the breastplate. So the effort will be the breastplate of righteousness. Christ's righteousness. You see, the righteousness of Christ alone is enough. But God also wants us to also be righteous and make right decisions. In other words, always 100%, our desire must choose to align with God. You know, I have people who have been 
do you know it's possible and that I remember one family, I will not name them. I, I was there. And they said, Papa, we, we need to get you a car and all that. I was in the office, my birthday, $20,000. I never made a call. I never sit in the church and talk. God knows how to meet your needs on his terms. Are, are you here? But not you finding a way to manipulate people to take they are because they will not be, they will still be blessed, by the way. They will still be blessed. No matter how you get the money, they will still be blessed. But it does not exonerate you. So I wanted 